It was announced that WBA, IBF and WBO heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua and WBC boss Tyson Fury have reached a financial agreement on a two-fight deal. Britain's rival champions have been holding talks over an undisputed world heavyweight title fight and have thrashed out initial terms for two blockbuster battles. The main positive news is that Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury have both agreed to a, a two-fight deal. According to Eddie Hearn, Joshua's promoter, the first bout could happen in the summer of 2021. Fury is the unbeaten WBC heavyweight champion and Joshua holds the IBF, WBA and WBO titles. Before the undisputed title fight can take place, Fury is contracted to face Deontay Wilder for a third time and Joshua will meet mandatory challenger Kubrat Pulev. He's a boxer puncher, so it'll be a good matchup for sure. A lot can happen in 12 months. There appears to be at least couple substantial hurdles to clear before we get to the biggest fight in British boxing history. Press like and notification bell and tell us in comments your thoughts on this blockbuster battle. It appears we are getting ever closer to having our first undisputed heavyweight champion since Lennox Lewis in 2000. The biggest fight in British boxing history has just been agreed. Get up there my boy! ...and ring belts, while Joshua owns the IBF, WBA, WBO and IBO titles, meaning the clash between the two will see all the gold on the line. Joshua's promoter Eddie Hearn says a two-fight deal has been agreed, but there are plenty more negotiations to be done, with no dates or venues confirmed, while both men are also scheduled for other fight next. AJ was due to fight Kubrat Pulev this summer, while Fury should be fighting Deontay Wilder for a third time. I'm just gonna smash Deontay Wilder's face right in, in the next fight, um, and then we go into the Joshua fight. British boxing fans will be desperate to see Fury Joshua in the UK and they may get that for one of the bouts, but it looks very unlikely that both would be held on home soil. There's not going to be any uh, country that stages major events that won't want this fight and that's something to be dealt with over the next month or so. Both of these single natives have the ability to fight a rough and rowdy style, where they get into a phone booth and exchange hands. Joshua has done this for the majority of his wins, leading to 21 knockout victories in 23 wins. He tried that against Ruiz and paid the price, getting stopped in the 7th round. He went back to the drawing board in the rematch, sticking to a more traditional boxing style, sticking and moving and not getting into a war and cruising to a unanimous decision victory. As for Fury, he is known for his slickness in the ring, sliding out of danger using his long jabs to keep his opponents on the outside. Oh, he has great conditioning and his style often leaves foes confused about when to throw, while he is constantly touching them with heavy jabs. And if he can keep that punch working... Oh. In terms of professional careers, it's Fury who has stepped into the ring the most and can offer the most experience. The Manchester-born Bouter is an undefeated boxer with a 30 and 0 record, the long draw coming in his first fight with Deontay Wilder. After returning for a nearly 3 year layoff, the Gypsy King is 5-0-1 with 3 knockouts and was favored in 4 of those fights. Joshua had his perfect record snapped in a stunning upset loss to Andy Ruiz in June 2019. AJ redeemed himself with an impressive tactical approach in the December image, just the second five he has won via decision in his 24 fight career.
regarding professional knockouts. Both boxers are tied on 21. But given AJ has fewer pro fights, his record betters Fury with a 91% KO rate to 70%. Looking at when the two fighters knock out their opponents could give us interesting insight into what round a potential encounter could be decided. The two-time world champ has 16 KOs in the opening three rounds of his fight so far, an astonishing 76% of his matchups have been over just a quarter of the way through. AJ's most little round is the second, where he has bested eight opponents. For Fury, who has fewer knockout results in his career, it's the fifth round where he is most prolific, having taken out four fighters at that stage of the fight. Many may see value on AJ, who has never entered the ring as an underdog, so seeing a plus sign next to his odds is absolutely enticing. Conversely, Fury was an underdog in both of the Wilder fights, but was a heavy favorite in his tune-up fights against Otto Wallin, Tom Schwartz, Francesco Pianeta and Sefer Seferi. How will the Gypsy King perform as the close favorite? A lot can happen in 12 months. There appears to be at least couple substantial hurdles to clear before we get to the biggest fight in British boxing history. First, AJ must defend against his IBF mandatory challenger Kubrat Pulev, a contest being targeted for November. And also looking at where that fight's going to take place, we'd love that fight to take place in the UK. The Bulgarian has worked hard to get himself back into contention, his record showing just one loss in a 29 bout career. The spare coming against Vladimir Klitschko in 2014. Then, Fury must face Deontay Wilder once more due to their contractual rematch clause. This trilogy bout is likely for December. I knock him spark out and then we got into the big fight. Despite the result of February's fight, Deontay believes he is better than Fury and has spoken of his confidence in beating Joshua. And we will rise like a phoenix from the ashes and regain the title. At this same point, Fury will be ordered to defend against WBC mandatory Dillian White. The Briton is the mandatory challenger for Fury's WBC belt and he has been in the number one challenger position for nearly 1000 days. The body snatcher is the interim champion and was told he will get his shot by February 2021, before the announcement of the Fury Joshua 2 fight agreement. It appears the current plan for Fury Joshua disregards their 2021 mandatory challengers and suggests the pair will simply face one another twice instead. Although the announcement of financial terms being agreed was a significant step towards Fury vs Joshua, there is still a long way to go before both men stand across from one another in the ring. There's still a lot to overcome, you know, we're looking at obviously venues as well. Two Britons, two different fighters with two very different styles. For all of the belts in the heavyweight division. One winner, who will it be? Can it get any better than this?